shipwrecked on top of the world. Let's access some heritage with Arctic survival in the 18th century. Out of nowhere, I suddenly surrounded their wooden fishing vessel. They were two miles from shore, yet the turbulent Arctic waters had betrayed them. Captain Otomkov and his 14 crew members were not even supposed to be here. Eight days before, they had set sail on fair winds from the sleepy northern Russian port of Mezen, bound for the whaling fisheries seasonal settlements in West Spitsbergen. But the winds had turned on the small vessel and had driven them towards the less hospitable Edge Island. Now they were trapped by ice. The experienced crew were no fools. The risks of navigating Arctic waters were deeply understood. They knew their vessel could be crushed at any time or freed to open waters. Consulting the crew, one sailor remembered a group of Russians several years ago had built a hut on the island in an attempt to start a whale fishery. It was soon decided that if the hut still existed, the crew would stand a better chance of wintering there. A party of four were formed under the charge of the 44-year-old boatswain Alexis Kimlov. The path over the two miles of jagged ice flow to shore would be a treacherous one. Ice fragments lifted with the waves and were driven against one another by the wind. The sailors of the expedition had to pack lightly to not impede their agility on the tenuous ice. An axe, a knife, a small kettle with a cooking grill, a piece of touchwood and tinderbox since the island had no trees, a bag of 24 pounds of flour, and a tin box of tobacco along with their wooden pipes was all the men decided to carry. A polar bear attack plagued the mines of the Arctic seafarers, and a musket, powder horn, and lead ball were added to their meager belongings. There was only enough gunpowder for 12 shots, but more than sufficient for their overnight journey to find the hut. While challenging, the sure-footed experience of a sailor proved a boon and the four men crossed the ice and reached the gravel shore without incident. On the backdrop of a barren wasteland, the protruding hut was quickly discovered only a mile from the sea. Though weathered, the previous occupants had built a sound structure wood had been brought from Russia and a traditional peasant dwelling had been built. The structure's main rectangular room was 36 feet by 18. The hut was 18 feet high to allow a high-pitched roof to deter snow buildup. Small trapdoor-like windows in the upper part of the walls allowed for the smoke to vent. It proved an efficient system of keeping the lower part of the room smoke-free. Typically, these fireplaces were built like brick ovens with flat tops. Peasants often slept on top of them to benefit from the warmth of the stone and clay. To guard the hut's main room from the frigid Arctic air, an enclosed porch or antechamber had been built at the entrance. The four sailors were delighted with what they had found. Though there were gaps in the plank walls and strong winds blowing outside, the group was still able to pass the night tolerably in the hut. Early the next morning, Alexis and his men hurried back to the ship to tell the crew the good news. Reaching the shore, they were greeted with an empty horizon. The ship was gone. The ice flow had also disappeared, leaving only open water. Little did the four sailors know, the ship and its crew had been claimed by the depths of the Arctic Ocean. Stranded, Alexis and his men faced a bleak situation. After a dozen shots, the musket would be useless. There were no trees or bushes or even grass on the island. How would they keep warm? Only moss grew in any abundance on the barren tundra that was now their home. While there were herds of reindeer, the surrounding water seemed devoid of fish. With reindeer as their only source of food, how would they hunt when their musket was out of rounds? With Alexis was his godson Ivan, who had wintered at the whaling settlement on West Spitsbergen. They had experience living with limited resources. However, without fuel or weapons to hunt, 
they seemed doomed.